it was so fast and intense, you know, and so critical out of nowhere that you kind of look back on it and say, was that, was it really that serious? Did that really happen? You know, we're, we're people of faith, and so I was praying, and I, I was like, how could I have ever wanted anything more than all these healthy kids? I remember getting a call from the ER physician to help assist to stabilize Francie. When I got there, Francie was cold, mottled, and appeared blue. Parents were at the bedside when she had a cardiac arrest episode. Yeah, about two in the morning is, I think, when we got you know, woken up. You, kn you knew what it was when it happened. <laughs> Don't cry because I'm going to cry. Um, yeah, she, you know, we had to resuscitate her. Some guy ran in and did compressions, and he was miraculous. She was not out of the woods. When we walk in a room and we tell a family that ECMO is a discussion we need to have with them, that means their child, really in the entire health system, just became the most critical patient in the system. You know, we can't be in the room for that, so we, we took us out, said our you know, goodbyes to Francie and, and then kind of from there. I was talking to God and I knew, I, I knew he was there. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what answer I would get, but I knew he was there. And then they came around the corner, the doctors with just smiles of relief on their face and I, I knew it was all gonna be okay. They had just moved her, shifted her a little bit and suddenly, her vitals started coming back, and so they had decided to ditch the ECMO circuit. With ongoing fevers and necrosis, the kidney was dying. So, you know, it's a big deal taking a kidney out. So she continued to recover and respond to the antibiotic therapy and was able to avert a nephrectomy or the kidney removal. We were in the PQ for about a week um, and then moved up to the regular floor and were up there for three and a half, four weeks. She miraculously responded to our conservative management with antibiotic therapy and close follow-up. She was stabilized well enough to be discharged home eventually and has now returned back to her baseline, her usual chirpy self, participating in activities like soccer, school play, and we are very happy to see that progress and she's a true miracle. There were three times where I feel like we really had some divine help. The first time was actually coming to the hospital. Our pediatrician told me later he could have just sent me to urgent care, but he knew from my voice that something was off. Then later that night when she flatlined, that wonderful man was able to bring her back. I mean. That's pretty miraculous. I will always remember those doctors coming around the corner and they had smiles and their faces were relieved and I knew right then that she was going to be okay. I think that's where faith really helps you because even if you're suffering, you know that we all suffer and we do it together and that's why we're here.